Next, we're excited for our first Bold Culture segment. This will be a regular segment hosted by our very own Lindsay Christian. Hey, Lindsay. Uh, we're excited to welcome her back on the show today. Also joining us is two-time Olympic gold medalist, Natasha Hastings. She's a track and field sprinter, and I love this. She's known as a 400-meter diva. Anyone who can put a diva in their name gets all my respect. Welcome, ladies. How are you guys doing today? Doing great. Thanks for having yeah, us back, you? Diana. Of course. So, First, Lindsay, can you tell us a little bit about our new Bowl Culture segment? I'm really excited to introduce Bowl Culture to our Bowl viewers. It's a segment that will feature and spotlight people of color who are bold in their industries. So I'm really excited that Natasha is our first Bold Culture guest. Uh, she's phenomenal. As you mentioned, a two-time Olympic track star. She's an Under Armour athlete. And she's also leveraging her platform to inspire and encourage young women in sports as a philanthropist. So she's rocking. She's Aww. bold. She's doing it. You're Thank doing it. You. <laughs> so obviously, those are all the reasons why you wanted her to be a guest today to Absolutely. inspire, for people to aspire to be a diva in their own lives. Absolutely. And to keep reaching. I mean, you've won two Olympic gold medals, which some people would be like, I'm good. I'm going to go watch like Bravo and just chill out. But instead, you're prepping for the 2020 Olympics. So what motivates you to keep going? Well, I'm still watching Bravo as well, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, there's always the quest for more. Um, and I sort of feel like my job on the track isn't done yet. I've been running since I was nine, got started here in New York City, um, but I've always wanted to, you know, have as many medals as possible. I'm still going after that individual medal. Both of my medals are relay medals. Um, so I am grateful thus far for the career that I've had, but I would love to get another or a individual medal. So I'm still pushing through. Yeah. And you're a native New Yorker yourself, mm -hmm. but you live in Texas right. because you're there to train. Like, what is your preparation like for 2020 Olympics? Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> currently, I'm currently I'm mostly in rehab. I've been dealing with a knee issue. So right now I've been riding my bike. I've been going to the pool. I've been doing lots of weight training. Uh, well, I shouldn't say lots of weight training. <laughs> but, I mean, my typical training schedule, I train five days a week. Wow. Um, I'm getting to the point now I'm 32, so I'm starting to figure out, I kind of have to alter that. It's not that I can't do the same things, it's just a little bit different now. So um, just kind of listening to my body. I mean, I do my training days are from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. That's intense. So yeah, it is very intense. So I'm trying to figure out how to alter that so that I can perform at the best level but not beat my body up so much. Right. Wow, that's intense. Five days a week? Mm -hmm. Woo. <laughs> okay, let's talk about being a, a woman, an athlete, um, and let's segue into our sister, Serena Williams. Oh, gosh. <laughs> and the controversy surrounding the U.S. Open, mm -hmm. um, she was very bold in standing up for herself and conversing with the empire that, and the referee, rather, mm -hmm. that she demanded an apology. Right. I mean, what were your thoughts on that, just as a woman who is in sports? Um... Oh, gosh. OK. <laughs> so as a woman, I 100 percent agreed with everything that she said. Um, and I do agree that women are penalized a lot different than men are. Um, we won't even get into the compensation conversation. Um, I agree 100 percent. I do wish, though, that that situation went down a little bit differently because I feel like a moment was taken away from Naomi. Yeah. Um, Myself speaking as the underdog in my sport, when I've had those moments that I know the hours and the blood and the sweat and the tears that I've put into, and then to feel like it's been taken away from you. And she literally apologized for winning, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, so for me, that was the more heartbreaking part. Um, but I mean, Serena didn't say anything that's not the truth. Um, it, it's, it's, it's tough out here for us. Yeah. Now, is it tough out here for women? What about women of color in sports? Oh, what do you think is the, the yeah. treatment and, and the perception? I think especially for women of color. I mean, we're definitely not respected as much as um, even against our female counterparts. Um, and it's unfortunate, it, but it's the thing that we do have to come together on. There is strength in numbers. And um, particularly in my sport, I feel like it's a challenge because we are an individual sport. Mm -hmm. So when we're told that, you know, it's time for us to come together collectively and as a team, mm -hmm. um, it does become a challenge to kind of put that competitive spirit to the side. But um, it, it's, it's hard for us sisters. <laughs> You mentioned about uh, how Naomi was kind of 
kind of lost in that moment, even though she won. And you do a lot with um, Under Armour and ads for them. Mm -hmm. And you're using your platform to help young athletes. So can you tell us about that? Well, <laughs> so again, speaking of Under Armour, that's one of the things that, or two of the things that I love about being a part of that brand is that they celebrate the underdog, but they also celebrate the female athlete. Um, and I've come into a situation where I'm not having to stifle who I am. Mm -hmm. That being the lashes, the <laughs> lipstick, right. the, you know, they're like, when we're getting ready for shoots, they're like, okay, what are you coming with this time? How's your hair gonna look? How? So, you know, being unapologetic about who I am as not just the athlete, but Natasha. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want to convey to young girls that, hey, you know, whether you grow up to be the professional athlete or not, it's okay to be who you are, mm -hmm. who you want to be, and be unapologetic about that. Be comfortable in your skin. And um, for me, I grew up having body image issues. I didn't always feel like I was the prettiest girl. Um, so there are things that I didn't tap into until my 20s that I feel it's so important to get girls before they get to that point during these impressionable years. Yeah. And is that what inspired you to start the Natasha Hastings Foundation? You're working with young women mm -hmm. in sports and you have an initiative called the Tea Time, <laughs> Tea Time with Tasha. Yeah, I think that is so cute, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that is absolutely why. I mean, I started the foundation with myself and my journey in mind. Um, the resources that I wish I had access to, also thinking about my mom mm -hmm. and the sacrifices that she made for me to get to this level. Um, so in retrospect, I, I don't remember having an athlete, an Olympic athlete come back. And it's not that in New York City we don't have Mm -hmm. Olympians that have come from here mm -hmm. um, to be a tangible resource. Tell me about what your experience was. Tell me what it took to get there. Um, tell me what it's like for your everyday life. What have you had to overcome? Um, and, and that's something that I feel like was missing for me and I want to pay it forward to the next generation. And there's a gala, right? Can you ladies tell us about that? Yes. yes. So excited. <laughs> the Tea Time Gala. This is the inaugural this Tea Time inaugural, Gala. Yes. And I'm really excited because I'm serving as one of the co-hosts along with Raval Davis. It's happening here in the city at the Time New York Hotel mm -hmm. at Le Grand Lounge. And it will be a fabulous affair to raise money for the Tea Time with Tasha Initiative, among other efforts right. through your foundation. So we're specifically hoping to raise funds to send girls to high school school national so again thinking back on my experience um, people don't sometimes realize the expenses that go into um, your child participating in any sport mm -hmm. um, and again thinking about my journey that laid the foundation for where I am so being able to pay it forward to you know families that want to see and be able to provide for their daughters to go on and have these experiences but it just might be tough um, I, I wanted to do that for these young girls. And who are some of the special guests who will be there at the gala? Oh gosh, so we have Max Siegel coming who is the CEO of USA Track and Field. So I'm honored that he's even taking right. <laughs> time out to come and um, speak. Um, we have Phaedra Knight who is a Rugby Hall of Famer. Um, we have some performances um, by Two girls that are special to me. One, uh, Mangbi from Mangbi Silla, excuse me. Um, she's from New York City, okay. but she also went to my high school. So I was like, yes, you have to come. <laughs> um, and then um, my fiance is going to be there, William Gay. He's a uh, he's not retired. We're waiting for somebody to call, but <laughs> he's a Super Bowl champion. Um, so Our we couple, <laughs> yes, right? Super Bowl champion, Olympic star. Like, come on now, Our kids. Uh, the, hopefully, they don't do either track or football because they got some big shoes to fill. <laughs> right. And how can bowl viewers uh, buy tickets to the gala? Um, all information is at nhfcares.org. Wonderful. And if you can't make it, you can always donate to yes, her cause. You may. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. Thank you so much for joining Thank us you. for the first Bull Culture segment. It's so excited. Cool. Thank I, you, Diana. Luck with this, the gala. Thank you. It's Thank you so much. And hopefully I can come back. Yes. yes. I, I just invited myself. No, no. I want to have you back. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> have you back. Right? you back before 2020? Are you <laughs> right? Exactly. Plus, there's so much more to ask you. Yes. <laughs> too. Thank, Thank you, guys. Thank really appreciate you. you being here. Thank you.